And so without further ado, let us say hello to Lerone Murphy, who's kind enough to join us. Lerone, my man, how are you? Thank you for doing this. What's happening, man? It's been a long time coming, but finally here. I love it. I love it. And it's so great to have you. Are you sponsored by Warzone, whatever that is behind you? It's it's very nicely. Oh, now I lost your lighting. It's like positioned perfectly. Yeah. Is this is this a sponsored element? Nah, I was just playing it before <laughs> while I was waiting to come on. Respect. And I know you just flew home from Abu Dhabi. Mm. Uh, so I appreciate you doing this in the evening over there in the UK. By the way, uh, both Luke and I have a bone to pick with you. Um you're doing great things and, and, and we respect you tremendously, but I haven't, I don't like, you know, I use an iPhone and I don't like yeah. people. I'm not a big fan of when you text someone and then it says read at a certain time, because I sort of feel like, okay, I don't need to know. And then I see that you read it and you don't reply. And then I start to get all anxious. <laughs> However, it has come to my attention, Lerone, that you're one of those who uses WhatsApp and doesn't turn on the blue check. I hate the people who turn off the blue check. I mean, I want to know if it's been received. That's common courtesy. Why do you turn off the blue check? This is from me and Luke. We want to we want to have an intervention. Why do you turn off the blue check? For that exact reason, I keep it, if, if I read the message and I'm not ready to reply, then I'm not ready to reply. When, when people see blue ticks, they feel disrespected. Yes. And sometimes it's not even, it's not even that. You just not got the time, you know? Okay, fair enough. I don't know if I buy the excuse, but uh, I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> Glad that we cleared that up. Um, by the way, why always in Abu Dhabi? Why don't they have you fight anywhere else? Four fights, four fights in Abu Dhabi. I'm not complaining, you know, to be honest, but obviously I've been booked to fight in London a few times and it's and the, sh the show's been cancelled. So I feel like I'm the bad luck charm for London. Um, and the Vegas got cancelled because my visa didn't come in time. So... I have had other shows booked, but it's just it always end up falling in Abu Dhabi. And and uh, what happened with the visa? What was the issue? Was it the same stuff that like Patty was dealing with and some of those guys? Yeah, similar thing. I must have had just like a caution from 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 when I was a kid, and it's like they have to knock back the first um, initial um, visa, and then you got to wait a few weeks. But it's stupid, really. But yeah, it is what it is. What's this caution that you're speaking of that you're glossing over, Lerone? Just an like old caution for cannabis when I was a kid. I used oh, okay. to smoke a bit of weed here and there, like nothing really. All right, fair enough. Um, great win, great performance. I know you're a little disappointed, no 50 Gs. Did you think you had it in the bag? Most certainly. Like that was that was the cleanest KO of the night. Nobody else went to sleep like that from from a strike. Um and to to come back from the first, the first like I had a bad first round and to come out like that and just to KO, KO Macron like that. For me, it deserved it in it, but obviously that's the pros and cons of fighting on big cards like that. Um, the big guys usually get the bonuses. Yeah, it's it's a weird one because obviously it's discretional. They don't have to give bonuses to anyone, but it's always funny mm. when someone who's you know coming up and lower on the card uh, doesn't get one, and then someone on the card who's higher up, who obviously is probably making more than someone you know on the prelims, doesn't get it. I was surprised they put you in the early prelims and not on the BT portion of the card. Were you surprised about that as well? I think that was just because um, I was a replacement fighter. I think they just okay. kept kind of kept the card the same. Do you get what I'm saying? But um, I'm not too sure. I wasn't really bothered where I fought. I just wanted to fight, really. Um, after my fight got cancelled, I just needed to get in there. Yeah. Um, and so, again, like I said, a tremendous win. And now I feel like I feel like that was your best in the UFC. And you've had some great moments so far. Would, would you say that's the performance that you're most proud of thus far? No. Really? Not at all. Not, I'm not even being negative right now, but I just feel like I watched it back before, and that that whole that whole day, I just had a weird day, and it, it felt like I couldn't get up for the fight almost, and like even in the change rooms, I'm hitting pads, feeling slow, flat, not even slow, flat, and then I'm walking out, I'm just not feeling like I normally I'm I'm on fire inside, I'm dying to get in there, um, I'm dying to fight, and I just felt a bit weird, and then even it took me around to get warm. As soon as I as soon as I got out of the um, first round, sat down on the bench. I was like, okay, I'm warm now. I want to now. I want to go. Do you get what I'm saying? But yeah. that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Amateur pro. I felt, uh, that was the first time I've ever felt like that. Any reasons? Any uh, hypotheses as to why that happened? I don't have a clue. I wasn't even. It wasn't like I was nervous, and I think that's what that's what it was. I wasn't nervous, almost, and. Nerves are good for fighters, as everybody knows. And I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing. 
I can't think, get my head around it. I think the reason is you didn't walk out to Island Boy. I think that was the, uh, <laughs> the element that was. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, by the way, uh, I saw your picture with Hasbulla. Was that before or after the event? That was the day after the, the event. That was okay. a Sunday morning. Did he yeah, give you man. any uh, words of uh, wisdom? Did he say anything about your fight? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think he was a bit pissed off that everyone was asking him for pictures. I think that must have been his probably fiftieth picture of the right. day. So he's, he's, you know, yeah. So your team has Bula, like, not uh, Abdul. Nah, I'm Hasbulla, bro. Okay. I like Hasbulla. <laughs> Hasbulla is gangster. He is gangster. Um, well, uh, you know, part of your appeal, and I know that uh, you have probably retold the story of why they call you the miracle ad nauseum, but this is our first time talking, Lerone, and so please let me be mm-hmm. the uh, 500th and first person to ask you, could you tell the story yeah. of what happened back in 2013 when you were leaving that barbershop? Because this is one of the most, I was doing a show on on, on Friday with uh, with P.T. Carroll and Chuck Mendenhall, and uh I was telling them about it. PT knew your story, but Chuck was like blown away. He had no idea. So, so there's still some people out there who don't know what you have had to overcome. Can you tell us what it was? Yeah, it's just, obviously I'm just going to say it like it's nothing in it because I've told it so many times, but it's just, I was young, 20, 21 and whatever. Um, I was coming out of a barber's and I ended up getting shot in the face, drive-by. Now, this is an, I mean, again, you say it like I went to the store to get milk. Like it's just completely nonchalant for you. Were they targeting you? Or were you just caught in the crossfire? I don't know. I don't know. One of the, I don't know. Could have been it. I don't know. It's just one of them areas, isn't it? Things happen. Now, this is May of 2013, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still, eight years later, you don't know? Nah. Did they ever find the guy who shot you? I don't know, bro. Wow, you don't know. Now, can I ask, no. do you not know or do you not want to talk about it? I, just, I don't even know, you know. Okay. Don't know, bro. Now, and and what what are the uh, the ramifications that you had to deal with? Because it, it went through your cheek, correct? Through my mouth. I uh, lost a few teeth on that side. And then I had to get like a... Um, wow. Off, a tracheostomy through my throat. Did they think you were going to die? Cut. Yeah, cut, cause my, because the bullet went through my tongue, um, my mouth started to swell up and I couldn't breathe. So they had to do the tracheostomy through my throat. Do you even remember it? Yeah, I remember everything. You remember the feeling? Yeah, it didn't yeah, it's just like it just felt like I got punched in the face. Really? <laughs> just felt like I, yeah, it just felt like I got, I got dropped, I went out, went out for a few seconds and then walked back up and it's just like Call of Duty ringing in my ears and then um got back up and just went to the hospital. Did you lose teeth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have fake teeth? Yeah, yeah, a few. How, how, many, how many would you say are fake? Four, say four. Okay. Three, four. And 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 who who called the the ambulance? Like who who saved your life? I would imagine if no one calls, you may die on the spot, right? Yeah. No, I got in. I got in my cousin's car. Went went with my cousin. Holy smokes! Your cousin was there with you. Yeah. yeah. Did he get shot? No. Okay. Just thank me. God. Have you did you ever go back to that uh, that barber? By the way. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I got out of hospital, I went. I got got a haircut. Come on, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> you still go Stupid back? Stupid. Now I think of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I got a different one. I got a different barber now, but yeah. Okay. How long were you in the hospital for? Uh, maybe ten ten days to two weeks. Okay. About two, two. Yeah, not, not that long. And and uh, did like did was your face at the time? What did it look like? Normal, you know. What? It's, it's crazy enough, but crazy enough, it wasn't. Oh, uh, it's just I don't know. It's just like one of them things. Like an inch to an inch to any side, it would have been a total different story. It's sure. Like, do you get what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It's one of them. It's just one of them weird, weird little situations. How long did it take for you to, you know, resume a normal life again? Like, how long was the actual recovery? Physical or mentally? Oh, uh, okay. That's a great uh, follow up. I, I, let, let's go physical first. Physical was and it's physical was a minor. Like nothing really. It's, I was recovered pretty much straight away. Like huh. not straight away, yeah, but yeah. within a few weeks. Within a few weeks, but mentally, it's more like if that. That's probably where the, the damage was caused. Where it's like you just you just like probably angry all the time and whatnot. 
Now, um, being around people, was it hard to go back into like normal, more, normal life? Were you anxious about that? Did you feel like you were looking over your shoulder? Uh, not really, you know. Not, not really. Nah, not really. Uh, prob- uh, yeah, obviously more than more than I was, but not like I was still going to places. I was still going to into town, into raves and what whatnot at the time. So, oh wow! Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, prior to this, did you train in martial arts at all? Nah, I, um, I started martial arts 22 years old. Um, I didn't do no, no combat sports before that. You were, you, you wanted to be a footballer, right? Yeah. Yeah. As a kid, but like, there's a, I probably stopped playing football, maybe 15, 16. And then there's a, just a big gap in my life where I didn't do any sports. So just, just chilled yeah. as a teenager, you know? Did, did you used to get in a little bit of trouble? Bits and bobs. Okay. Bits and bobs. Um, Bits and bobs. Did you get into martial arts because of what happened? No, nah, not at all. It, people people think that, but it's not at all. It was just it was just one of the things. I used to I used to always watch it. My dad used to have the old school UFC DVDs. Um, I used to I used to always watch it, and I always loved watching it. But it's just that like a gym opened up at, around the. Um, like a few, like maybe what six months, seven months after after that thing happened, and then I just ended up going there, and I just loved it, and I just, I just loved training in it, and I felt felt like that training took my mind away from thinking about other things. You know what I mean? And it was it was my only time where I felt free, so mm-hmm. I felt like that's where I got my addiction from, and I was literally in the gym every day, and then I, I never thought I'd be a fighter. I was just training because I like train training. You get what I'm saying? And I just ended up having my first amateur fight. And then from there, I was hooked, hooked for life. How do you go from like, oh, I'm just there to train, get my mind off things, to an amateur fight, to a pro fight? Like who convinces you? Who tells you, you know what? You should probably think of this. Do you know what? It's like the, the coach puts you in for a fight. You're scared to death. You don't want to You don't want to fight. You're thinking, I'm me. I'm not ready to fight. Like I, I'm going to fight in front of my friends and that. Like, and then once you take that step, and you have to fight, then you you're in. Then it's a crazy thing. And now, you, like you it's never much. would you you never would have imagined that you'd do this in your career, right? Like this would be your job. No, n- never ever in a million years. Huh. Like that was that was always my my, my my cousins. My cousin does boxing, and I always used to think, how do you fight in front of people? Like you brave. Like I'd be like I've got too. I must have had like too much ego to think I'd like put myself in that position, make myself vulnerable and be able to like lose in front of people. Do you get what I'm saying? And and, and that's what I was always scared of. But once I got in there, then I was sweet. What do you think you'd be doing if you never found this? <sighs> scary to think, you know, I don't have a clue. Scary to think. So in many respects, I mean, you survived the shot, but uh, one could say MMA kind of helped save your life as well. 100%. Like one... <laughs> 100 percent wow um that is unbelievable do you, do you still know those coaches that got you into like are you still with those guys no nah, um it's the same, same team same team yeah but um i'm working with the, the coach you would have seen um in my in all my ufc fights is car prince um we've got a new gym in not in, in ashton manchester called manchester top team right and you were um, but we're, we're, sorry go ahead i didn't mean to interrupt yeah, it's the same. It's the same. I started with the same people. We're all the same people, yeah. Now, how did you meet Big Slow, Luke Barnard? Because I have to say, this man has been telling me about you. Like, this man is a fan of yours since before yeah, you Luke's got. Yeah, Luke's my guy. Yeah, he he's been he's been touting you since before you got to the UFC, messaging me. You got to watch Larone. You got sending me your clips, sending me your articles. Like, he has really been on your bandwagon, driving that thing. How did you guys link up? Through Car Prince, okay. which is my coach, he's them, them two are friends, and he, he brought Luke to the gym a few times. And Luke's just helped me with a lot of a lot of things, even away from fighting. Um, and I just like the way he breaks, he breaks situations down, and and even the cult, the way he coaches, I like the way he coaches. Everything's straightforward, simple, um, and yeah, we just we just created a connection from there. By the way, in those early days when you were at the gym. When people would punch you in the face, would that hurt? Like, would that hurt even more so? Because no, nothing. Nah, not at all. You know, that's why. Nah. Nah. 
And you have I'm the Iron Man now. You are the Strong, freaking Iron Man. Stronger. Jeez Louise. I'm assuming the nickname is because of what you survived. You didn't have the nickname before. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, as far as your day-to-day life, eating, things like that, does this affect you at all? Sweet. No, nah, not at all. I'm sweet. Jeez. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm lucky, man. I'm lucky. Very lucky. Man, I can't imagine. Do you feel like it changed the way you look at life? Like, uh, do, did you have, do you have now a more, I mean, obviously it was eight years ago, but like, were you someone who just kind of went through life and then afterward, a new appreciation for life, for, for the finer things, for family, for friends, you know, the stuff we take for granted? Mm, yeah, 100%. Like before, it's like you said, day to day, just living life day to day um, with no goals almost, just waking up and doing what I'm doing. Like no, no real goals. But even since I had my son, I think that that's what changed my life. Um, I'm a way of thinking, really. I had my son at 23, 20, no, 25, sorry. And that's when my, my mindset really changed. And it was like phew, putting my all into this MMA. I'm, 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 I'm making it. I'm making a better life for my family. How old are you now? I'm 30 now. 30, so Turn 30 in July. Your, th- your son is five. My son's four. Four turning four. five, yeah. Um, yeah, does, yeah. Does, does he understand what you do? Kind of, yeah, he trains a bit. He does a bit of training. I bring him to the gym. Yeah, he does the kids' classes and that. He, un- he, under- he understands it to a certain extent, obviously. Does, like, will you show him the knockout from Saturday? Yeah, I'll show him the fight. I'll show him the fight. And what does he say to that? He just, he just, he just look. He don't, he don't really. I don't, I don't think he understands. Yeah. I don't think he understands. But he just, he just look, watches it. Yeah, and says, "Oh, is that you, Daddy?" Whatever, whatever. It is. Uh, what you do is infinitely cooler than what I do. But sometimes I'll show my kids who are older than than yours what I do. Like on, hey, here I am. You know, on TV. They couldn't care less. I'd rather go watch YouTube <laughs> than some cartoon. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, not. Could not care less. Yeah, it's not asked right now, but. When he when he gets into high school or whatever, he'll be able to show his friends and stuff. So that's that's what I'm looking forward to. For sure. Now, um, your next one, we, we got to get out of Abu Dhabi, right? Like we need to go fight somewhere else, right? I mean, you you want to switch it up a little bit? I want to do the UK, really. That's top yeah. of my list. And then Vegas, when it's fully open, I don't really, I'm not really bothered about fight, fighting in Vegas unless it's fully open, like yeah. fully. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like the full Vegas, the full Vegas um, experience. But I want to fight in front of my home home fans, the UK fans, and I feel some real energy. Did you ever go to a, I know you said you were a bit late to the game, but like, did you ever go as a mm. fan to any of the UK UFC cards? The first ever UFC I went to was um, Bisping versus Henderson. Oh, for the belt, when Bisping uh, defended his title. Yeah, what year was that? That was 2016 uh, UFC 204. Imagine, that was the one at like 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah, No, that, that was my second. I went to uh, McGregor Mendez in Vegas. That was my first ever event. Oh. And then I, went to, then I went to the Manchester one, yeah. Okay, so you went to UFC 189. Why were you in Vegas for that? Uh, we was just in Vegas partying with me and the boys, really, and then and then we ended. We got me and my boy Damo. We got some tickets for the McGregor fight. It was sick, sick, best show I've ever been to. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, he walked out to Sinead O'Connor and and whatnot, and then so then you went to that Bisping one. That was the one in the middle of the night. What was that like? Yeah, mad, like crazy walk. Oh, it's crazy. It was, sick. It was a sick show, obviously, but it's just mad to be like coming out of a fight at five a.m., six a.m., whatever it was. Um, when you were watching those fights back then, now this is five years ago. Um, the Bisping one is almost exactly five years ago. I, I think it was October of uh, 2016, if my memory serves me correct. Were you thinking I'm going to be there one day? Yeah, that's when when I watched it live. When I actually went to the McGregor fight, that's when I fought Robbie Lawler fought as well um, against Rory McDonald. Yep, yep. All of them guys, and it's just like this is what I want to be, man. This is what I want to be. This is what I want to fight in front of these fans like that. It's just a crazy energy. So who do we want next? Mach wants it, you know. And Mach wants an interesting guy to beat because I feel like, and I don't know if you view it this way, um, you know, there was a time where Mach one I think was considered like a top prospect in your weight class, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, I think he's been a bit of a, you know, he's hit a bit of a rough skid now. And I feel like you're now one of these guys that people are talking about. So there's 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 a tale there to learn, but for you, as you move on from a great knockout win over Makwani Mirkhani, who's still very much respected, who makes sense next for you? Um, 
I, obviously I'm aiming for top 15 I, I've been shouting for a top 15 but it's, uh, whoever whoever man whoever at, at this point I'm just growing as a fighter and I'm just aiming for the title that's my only that's my only goal really the title so whoever on the way I'm taking and I feel like I'm like like you just said Macron was a, was a um, prospect and that but these these guys stop growing I'm still growing and I feel like I'm, I can get so much better it's like so much better and it's just putting it getting it Getting it right, man, and and I feel like I'm, I will do in the next in the next fight. You know which one I like? You versus Alex Caceres. He had a big win a couple of weeks ago. He's on a roll. What do you think of that? My coach, you keep my coach. Cause he's been asking for that fight. Um, he wants me to fight Caceres as well. Okay, your coach and I are on the same uh, the same wavelength. <laughs> do you like that one? I. Bro, He's fifteen. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. Um, in an hour and about anybody you say, but right. put the fight in front of me, and we're gonna get you know on saying I'll um an hour about any any anything. I'm I'm assuming the rest of the year is done for you, right? So maybe like early portion of 2022. You know what, bro? Like I've been sat about this today, like not doing anything, and I'm just thinking I need to get back to the gym. Huh. I need to I need to I need to go and train, man. I I I'll fight in December. Wow. But. Realistically, it's probably going to be February, but I just, I just I've got a bug now. I feel like I just feel like I've got something to prove, man. I just I, feel, I keep I keep saying to people, I'm not giving my best performance. I'm not giving my best performance, but it. I'm thinking to myself, is that just how I perceive myself, or is that how I actually fight? Do you get what I'm saying? But I feel like I know I can fight better than that. I know for a fact I can fight better than that. And that will keep pushing you and give you more motivation to get back in there. Uh, more, most importantly, mm. we'll end on this. Uh, whose side are you on? Uh, another Mancurian, I do believe, Tommy Fury or Jake Paul? Who are you rooting for? Nah, Tommy will smash him, you know. <laughs> Tommy will smash him. You know Tommy? Tommy Tommy's a prop. I don't, I don't personally, but his friends are friends. Um, but I feel like he'll, Tommy will smash him. He's a proper boxer and... It's it's gonna be um, Jake Paul's toughest fight in it, obviously, and I feel like he'll I feel like he'll smash him. You know. Are you a United fan? Man United. What's wrong with Man United? United yeah. What's happening? <sighs> manager. I think it's the manager. You can't you can't you can't listen to somebody that you've it's you've tra- like you've trained with and been in the same team with. You're not gonna have the same respect. I don't right, think. Right. I feel like we need we need like an older manager that's that's been in the game, got the experience and stuff. Yeah, I saw uh, Connor. I think he's a big United fan as well. Connor McGregor. He tweeted the same thing. If you want to jump off the bandwagon, Lerone, uh, I we do say up the toffees around these parts, and we <laughs> welcome you to Everton. All right, if you'd like to, please nah. consider it. What, what do you think? Well, are you Everton fan? Of course, lifelong Lerone. What are you talking about? What? Are you kidding? Were well, you surprised? How how did you even find them? Like how, do you, well, how does a Canadian know about <laughs> Everton? Though? Well, if I'm being honest, Lerone, uh, I was a lifelong Leicester, uh, Leicester City fan. I was a lifelong Leicester City fan. They win the Premiership, and then Molly, she helped buy my love, and I jumped <laughs> over to Everton because she was so enthusiastic and uh, persuasive. She got me some gear, and so now I'm Everton. Okay, okay, makes sense. Makes Not sense. Not really. I mean, it's a little bit shameless, but uh, here I am, repping because Molly's the best, and... Uh, they got. They gave me some. I could be bought, Lerone. That's the basic bottom line here. I could be bought. <laughs> they sent me some gear, <laughs> and that was that. Uh, so great to have you on the show, my friend. Congratulations on all your success. I am sorry for making you recount yeah. uh, a a very you know trying time in your life, but uh, I thought it was no, important for the fun. audience to know why they called yeah, yeah, you that and, and and why your story is so special. I look forward to the next one, and thanks for doing this, especially after the long journey home. Yeah, anytime, brother. Thank you for having me. All right, there he is, Lerone Murphy, the miracle, as they call him. What a unbelievable story that is. Shot in the face.